Hi, welcome to the Spiritual Connection Show. I'm your host, Katie Augustine. So I'm a spiritual energy healer, I'm a shamanic practitioner, I'm also a transformation coach. In addition, I'm the spiritual head of the Transformation Center CT, which is located in Westport, Connecticut. So at the center, we do a variety of things. We have workshops, we have trainings, we host spiritual leadership classes every month. Um, we also offer satsang every month, which is um, Sanskrit for in the company of the truth. So that happens usually the third or fourth Wednesday evening of the month. And it's just a little hour to get together and just share some experiences and we do um, meditation and chanting, just a beautiful um, relaxing time to be together. We also have um, two things each month related to shamanism. We have shamanic clinic that meets the second Tuesday evening of each month. And this is an introduction to shamanism. If you're curious about it, you can just sign up for a half hour um, healing session with one of our certified practitioners. And once a month, we're now having drumming and journeying. And this is an opportunity to actually go on a journey, a shamanic journey yourself. You'll learn how to do that, as well as experience some fantastic medicine drumming um, from a Halya running deer. So that, that's another opportunity. And we recently started um, another course. It's called Spiritual Curriculum for Living. And this is, happens on Sunday afternoons different dates um, each month, so just check our website, which is transformationcenterct.com. We'd love to have you at any of these. And we also do individual healing sessions and coaching sessions as well. Um, so tonight, um, welcome to the show, and we're going to start in a minute. And as you know, Spiritual Connection Show is all about connection. You know, it's about connecting with each other as well as connecting more fully with our own spiritual selves. So I want you to learn from each guest that we have, um, you know, find out about their journey, what they have to offer, and that way you can learn more about yourself. So thanks for being here. So tonight, my guest is Michael Bagley. Welcome to the show, Mike. Hi, Katie. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm happy you're here, too. Um, so I'm just going to read a little bit about you okay. so the audience can get to know you. And, you know, I was introduced to Mike by a mutual friend um, who works at Bankwell. Her name is Lucy French, and she's in my spiritual um, group. And she showed us um, the calendar that they sponsor. Um, I guess it's annual, once a year. And, and Mike takes the photographs for this calendar, which is pretty cool. And it's, it's all about the... Um, the pet adoption project that Bankwell does. So he takes the photos of each pet and puts it in the calendar, yeah. So we're gonna, sh we're gonna see some later, right? You brought That's some right. photos to show you us. Sure okay, did. cool. Um, so in addition to being an amazing photographer, Mike is a nonprofit leader, and he says he's a, quote, do-gooding tree hugger <laughs> <laughs> who has been very fortunate to enjoy work and experiences to keep him feeling fulfilled and of value. I love the way you say that. Well, thanks, that's, yeah. that's how I feel. Yeah, that's awesome. And we're gonna learn a lot about that um, in just a minute. But you know, the first question um, I'd like to ask my guest is, can you share a little bit about your personal spiritual journey, maybe how you started, where, how you got here, anything you wanna share? Sure, I'd love to. How I got here is a, a long and winding road. Okay. Um, well, we only have 30 minutes. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'll, keep, I'll give you the brief, the brief version, fortunately. Okay. Um, but I've been really, you know, as, as, I, as you said in, in the intro, I've been really lucky in my life to have a lot of um, guiding experiences that uh, kind of pushed me in certain directions to, to bring me to, to where I am today. It, when I grew up, which I did around here, um, for as long as I could remember growing up, I always imagine myself being a Catholic priest. Hmm. I was raised Catholic. I had two uncles who were Catholic priests. And for whatever reason, when I was as young as 
fourth and fifth grade, which is about as far back as I can remember, um, I remember thinking that was going to be my life. And um, I had a very normal high school and, and college experience, um, but I just knew that when I finished college uh, that I would wander off to seminary and, and spend the rest of my life doing ministry. Um, I did the first part and got to seminary, and when I got there I realized it really wasn't, I didn't feel at home there at all. Mm -hmm. I, I felt mm -hmm. uncomfortable and didn't really know, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, and it didn't f fulfill me the way I thought it would. Mm -hmm. And I had a very wise spiritual advisor, um, a, a nun who lived across the hall from me, um, Sister Lucy Malarkey, which is a great oh, wow. name, great right? Name, um, yeah. And she saw me in the hall one day, <coughs> and I guess she had been paying attention, and uh, she pointed to her door and pointed to her couch and said, sit. And when Sister Lucy <laughs> says sit, one sits. And so she said, what's wrong? And I said, nothing's wrong, I'm fine. And, and she said, you, you're not happy here. What, what, what's, you, you know, what, what's going on? I said, no, this is what I've thought about my whole life. This is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm going to, I'm going to be a priest. I'm going to be a good priest. And she said, but what if you did something else? What, why don't you explore that? And she sent me off with a week-long homework assignment to think about if I wasn't in seminary uh, or on, my, yeah. on the path of the priesthood, what would I be doing? And, and the next week I went back to her and I said I would be working with kids in the w wilderness. I'd done a lot of rock climbing and backpacking and things like that as I was growing up. And um, I, I kind of could picture myself doing that with troubled kids and, and all kinds of kids. And so her answer when I gave her my uh, uh, reveal, she said, mm -hmm. well, why aren't you doing that? And I said, well, I'm supposed to be here. And she said, well, maybe you're not. Why don't you go do something yeah, for yeah. a year? And the, the door swings both ways here. You can come in and you can go. That's great. But if you, if you come back and you miss it, you will know you're in the right place. If you go and do this, maybe you discover something that, that's your real calling. Either way, you're wow. going to be fine. What um, great advice. Yeah, I think of Lucy every, Sister Lucy every, every couple of days because yes. she you know, both kicked me in the rear end and invited me to go. Yeah on a journey and um, so I did go, went and worked for this organization in New Jersey that that ran wilderness programs for a variety of kids mostly troubled kids and I mm -hmm. loved it mm -hmm. and I ended up staying there for 10 years um, and you know in the field for a while and then worked my way through uh, in, into the organization um, the man who had started that organization was to this day the greatest mentor I've ever known um, one of the most uh, uh, Christ-like people I've ever known mm. in one of the funniest uh, humans you've ever known. He was, he was so kind and so um, thoughtful and caring about his fellow humans, but he was a former Marine and rough and tumble, and oh, he was just a, an amazing character. I could do a two-hour show on him um, uh -huh. with you, but I met him, and he kind of led the way for me about how to do the work and how to minister to people, not in a directly spiritual way but mm -hmm. in a way that was meaningful and, and yeah. influenced their lives and helped them develop their character and helped them sort out the, the challenges that were in front of them yeah. and, I, and I loved it. Uh, and then I went down to um, Maryland, a, a man that I met through that organization. We started a business doing similar work down in Maryland on an 80-foot sailboat. Wow, um, and oh, how fun. Out of Annapolis, and, yeah. uh, and we did that for 10 years, and then my mentor, Phil, passed away fairly suddenly from mm. uh, bone marrow cancer, mm. and he, uh, the organization invited me to come back and sit in his chair as executive director and no try and run the place for a few years which, uh, in, wow. in his wake, which was a really meaningful experience oh, for yeah, me because I was able yeah. to keep his legacy uh, going and um, and I did that for 10 years and then about five years ago moved back up here um, to work with Soundwaters which is the group that I um, worked with here oh, okay. but each experience that I had starting with Sister Lucy and mm -hmm. each thing I did there was a, another thing that kind of came from it that presented itself that you know moving on to the organization in New Jersey I met Phil yeah. and, and Phil uh, has you know turned me into the person that I am today in in so many ways and uh, yeah. the way I treat people the way I um, engage with people the way I in inject humor into uh, work and mm -hmm. how you know work hard play hard and all the things that Phil mentored modeled for me um, yeah. 
really formed me into the adult that I am, and then I was able to bring that to each scenario that I showed up in. So I, 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 it's a long way of saying that I really feel like I've been guided um, yeah. a, along the way, uh, yeah, and not necessarily in a traditional, you know, getting on my knees and crossing my hands. And, and I think a lot of times when we um, think about, uh, for many people when they think about spirituality and spiritual journey, there's mm-hmm. some formality to it. There's some sense of you have to do certain things or there's going to be a bolt of lightning that comes out of the sky oh, that's going to you know, really move you um, or be so clear. Um, mm. And I've always felt like it's a little bit of nudging mm. and a little bit of paying yeah. attention. And you get moved in a direction and, and look around a little bit and see what what's going on and what I can learn from here and, and apply that to the next situation. And I've always found that to be my spiritual uh, mm-hmm. influence, mo- much more so than a giant bolt of lightning. Yeah, no, that's interesting because I think um, that that's usually the case. I don't know too many people who have had those bolts of lightning yeah. experiences. I mean, mine sort of evolved the same way. I didn't know what I was looking for and, you know, it just kind of like little meander, like the, pr- the opportunities present themselves yeah. and it's up to us to take advantage of it, I guess. I agree. Um, recognize it and recognize take advantage it of it. Recognize it and take advantage of it, yeah. but it's not... You know, in hindsight, and maybe for you, I don't know, I'll ask the question, does it, does it feel like it, was, um, it wasn't an accident, that it was sort of meant, meant to be in a way? Yeah, yeah I do. There's, there's too many coincidences um, for it to have just been dumb luck. Uh, mm-hmm. I've certainly been lucky and f- uh, avoided problems and fallen into good things um, totally by chance. But a, a, a part of the beginning of that story when the, the, I saw Sister Lucy say on a Tuesday, that evening I called a friend of mine um, from college, and this is back in the day when you didn't talk to everybody all day, every day, right? Mm-hmm. It was, you ca- talked once a week or once every two weeks, and, and she was working at a bank. She was a new bank officer, and, and they had taken her training program out to a wilderness program that day for their team building training and when I called Carol Ann is her name I said you know, I just talked to Lucy and here's what I'm thinking about and it was a real um, gut-wrenching oh, um, yeah. th- thought for me and, and feeling for me and I wanted to share that with Carol Ann and, and she said well it's so funny that you called tonight today I was out at this place in New Jersey and everybody looked like you and everybody talked like you and everybody did the things you love to do oh, wow. and I took the brochure because I thought when you came home this summer I'd want to show you this place and that's the place that I ended up working for 20 of my there 30 years and go. so <laughs> it's it's not that's, that's like what are the ch- what are the odds right, right? I mean the universe is and like here you go <laughs> exactly. you want another spoon here's your spoon so and I, oh, so I think yeah. you're right I think the idea yeah. that that you know the, the, the um, coincidences are, are just, you know, things just happen. I, I think, I, th- I think we, we, if we're paying attention and if we at least snoop, you know, go down the road a little bit and say, well, let me see what's down mm-hmm. here. And I may not like it, but at least I know. And then I'll, I'll pull back and, and try to see where else I'm being guided um, is, yeah. is part of the Be- Because it's still trick. free choice. You know, like sometimes I have conversations with people and, and I'll say something like, well, you know, that really wasn't meant to be. And they'll go, well, what do you mean? It's like, you know, you didn't do it. I'm like, well, right, but it, it just felt like it wasn't the right thing at this time or something like that. Yeah. You know, you just yeah. kind of sort of know. Right. It's like that, you know, that gut feeling and, yeah. and our gut is our second brain, right? right. <laughs> and so Very it's much like so. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes stronger than, <laughs> smarter yeah, than, our, right, than our, right, real, right. our actual brain. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, the, the um, you know, what I, one of the things I'm grateful for about my seminary experience is, is learning some theology. And, and you know, if you, if you, when one grows up Catholic, one is, there's a lot of doctrine and there's a lot of the, the kind of orientation, at least when I was growing up, I think it's softened a bit, but was you do this because you don't want to get in trouble. You, you behave well because you don't want to end up in hell. Exactly. You, you know, you, you, you don't want to anger God because there will be consequences to that. And, the, um, the one of the theologians that uh, I was fortunate to study when I was in seminary was um, his f- his theology, which was radical at the time. This was in the fifties, and he was a, a, an American the- theologian. So, which you know, they were still studying 
Aquinas and you know <laughs> two thousand year old <laughs> theologians. This somebody who was 20, 30 years uh, ago just wasn't relevant. But yeah. the idea was this f idea of free will that yeah. we we God doesn't expect us to be a certain way. So he and if we don't, he's going to punish us. He wants us because we love him and he loves us. And you know the the, the model of a good parent, a, a good a good parents are not. Uh, scaring their children into no. submission, mm -hmm. they're allowing them to stretch their arms a little bit yeah. and spread their wings, and and where they err, they're nudged back into yeah. this might not be yeah. good for you, but right. but it's not out of fear, it's out of love, and yes. I think that idea of free will um, is really important because it gives you the opportunity. There, there's n there's not a path. There's not a this is what you're supposed to be doing, and you better mm -hmm. follow it, or you're going to be in trouble. It's you know, it's the feeling of fulfillment. It's the feeling of of being gratified. It's the feeling of love. It's all those feelings that, yeah. um, and I happen to believe that that's what God or the universe or whatever label we want to call it wants for us. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you, Mike. And you know, it's it's really all about love. Yeah. You know, love, and you know, like you said, forgiveness. If you kind of go off a little bit or whatever. But um, I was also raised Catholic, and I. Um, you know, I went along with it for basically my um, childhood, and then it just wasn't relevant. So mm -hmm. I didn't sort of make this decision. I just sort of, it just sort of, ev you know, kind of evaporated, if you right. will. And then what I realized was that it didn't resonate because it was all about guilt and sin. And you know, we had a joke that um, it was our la our mother of perpetual guilt or something <laughs> right. like that, you know, instead of yeah. whatever it was supposed to be. Yeah. You know? and, um, and then I didn't know what was missing in my life, but that's what it was, was a real spiritual connection. Yeah. And then when I discovered that, I'm like, oh my, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but if you hadn't, maybe hadn't had the Catholic foundation, you might not have had the, the, the nudge. Um, I, mean, I, I think. Yes, yes, it happens for it, a reason. And, it and does. At the right time, you know, timing is everything. Yeah. And I just wasn't ready at that time. Yeah. You know, so that's that's what happens. But it's great that you um, knew what was important to you. You know, so it's about us as individuals, right? Like self awareness and how when you when you saw it, you recognized it. Well, I think to your point, it's much it's more, more here than go. here. Yes, it's, it's, yes. Yeah, this feels right. It's a it's a it's a it's an old sweater that. You put on and you're like, oh yeah, this this does feel good, as opposed to a you know a new suit that's like, no, this isn't this isn't me. Yeah, yeah, um, and really I, th good enough. I think uh, you know the 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 old sweaters. When, whenever I walk into a an office building where there's cubicles and fluorescent lights and you know people are making a ton of money and they're happy that they're making a ton of money, but I just I feel like I'm putting on a suit. I just know that that's not yes. my place to be. Um, but yeah. when I'm out rolling around in the woods with some knucklehead kids or <laughs> you know out in the middle of the sound on a sailboat or whatever and, uh -huh. and I just it's that's my gut is like yeah this is this is you this is what you this is what makes you happy this is where you can do your best work and where you can engage the way you're you're, you're built to engage yeah. and all that and, and yeah. it's nice to have that there's nothing like that feeling in my opinion no it's true and, and for people you know a lot of people haven't experienced that because they, they follow their shoulds, you know, because that's right. the head, and, and you said it a few times at yeah. the beginning, but I, I should be doing this, you know, this is what I'm, this is my path to be a priest. And yeah. Mm. Well, I think, yeah, I think that it is unfortunate that that messaging is pretty strong for, uh, again, I think it may have softened since we were growing up, but the idea that you grow up and in Fairfield County anyway, you go to college, and then sometime between graduation and your 30s, you find somebody that you'll marry, and then you're going to have 2.3 yeah, kids, yeah. and you buy a house. There's a path that our parents set, and and it worked out for them for uh, for a lot of them. And um, but there's an idea of that's what you that's what one does. Um, right. And for right. a lot of people, maybe that is what they do. And for a lot of people, I know people who work in finance who just love it. Like they wake up in the morning and they just mm -hmm. can't wait to go they're make totally more money. Totally engaged in But it's doing. it's because of their personality and because they, it's not so much the money, it's because of the game and, and mm -hmm. they love winning. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it, they have that feeling of ful fulfillment. But there's other yeah. people who do the same thing who just do it because 
it's what they, they were like supposed, they're supposed to do. To, or and they, they got a degree yeah. in something and now they have to use yeah. that degree or it was a waste of time and all these coulds and shoulds that just yeah, bog, bog you down. Yeah, because um, I think then you get trapped. Yeah. You know, because you have this lifestyle that takes a certain amount of income to sustain. Yeah. And, you know, all these people depending on you and yeah. You know, and expectations, right? Expectations that you're doing the right thing. One of the one of the most influential things in my growing up. My father, when he was 40, he worked on Wall Street, and when on his 40th birthday, he resigned as a partner. He was a partner in a Wall Street firm, and I, I was 14. I had no idea the significance of that, but it was in the 70s, and nobody, people didn't do that in the 70s, mm -hmm. and and he became a consultant, which now, you know, 40 percent of the working world is consultants, <laughs> right? But but then it was a fairly novel concept. And I remember my grandmother, his mother, really not understanding why on earth he would abandon all that he had worked for. He had, mm -hmm. he had you know, he went to a good college. He got his MBA at Harvard. He was, he was on the path. Mm -hmm. But what he realized was that he didn't, he wasn't living the life that he wanted to. Yeah. He was leaving in the morning on the train and in the city all day and he was stressed and he wasn't seeing us. and. Um, after about three weeks of being home, he realized that seeing us wasn't all it was cracked up to be and decided <laughs> he, he would look for other work. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I realized many years later that his example of, uh, in, I, I, I had no way to appreciate it in the moment, right. but his example of I'm doing this even though I'm going to make less money and even though I'm going to have less status and even though it's important and this mm -hmm. is why it's important because I need to be happy and healthy and and I, I really think that uh, crystallized for me without me even knowing intellectually mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the, the idea that we go and we go do what we want. Uh, yeah, to that make that's us possible happy. for right. you. Yeah. yeah, so you probably internalized it without yeah. even being consciously aware of it. Yeah. Um, that's fortunate. Yeah. I mean, he was yeah. ahead of his time. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I really um, you know, commend you for, um, for following your heart and your gut. Well, as I said, I'm very lucky, and, well, and I feel we I create I'm our own luck too. We, we do sometimes, <laughs> for, for sure. Um, yeah, and, and uh, but I've been fortunate models. to have a lot of great role models and yeah. uh, people to to show me the way. Mm -hmm. And you're at Sound Waters currently. I am. It's a great organization. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, again, I was with, here with a friend, and and uh, you know, t another coincidence, um, she um, got a solicitation letter. The, the annual appeal letter and, and the logo for Soundwaters has a, a sailboat on it. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's this? And she said, oh, it's this thing my friend Scott is involved with. And I said, well, tell me about it. And she said, I don't, I don't really know much about it. And then I started investigating and discovered they were looking for a part-time captain and I have my license. And so I called and <laughs> said, hey, I'd love to work. And I worked the first summer, I worked maybe eight days with them and uh -huh. just drove the boat a couple of times and, and then started to meet people and find out more about the organization. And slowly but should work two days a week and then four days a week and and now I'm there full time uh, all awesome. the time and oh, really? uh, able to work with a lot of folks to manage the programs there so do you want to say a little bit about what sound waters does sure. for those people who don't know yeah so sound waters is a um, an environmental education organization focusing on the long island sound and mm -hmm. and every year w uh, we work with about 35,000 people mostly kids oh. uh, to talk about the Long Island Sound, the, the critters that live there, um, the, the importance of keeping it healthy and um, the, some climate change issues and all the mm -hmm. things that are affecting the environment. But we do so by going into schools and um, teaching okay. kids the, the science of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And hopefully as they grow, and, and it's proven, Sunwaters, this is our 30th anniversary, and wow. the theory turns out to be true that if you educate folks and they know a little bit more about something and we get them out on the sound, they, we get them down to the sound, they'll fall in love with it yeah. and then they care about it. You, you right. can't care about something you don't know or you've never yeah. seen yeah, and so part of what we do is bring them yeah, it starts with that. To, uh, to, to visit. To experience and then it they, themselves. Then right. they want to defend it and yeah. make sure that it's there for them and their kids. And so, so that's a great nonprofit. Uh, it's soundwaters.org. Right? That's right. And that's right. based in Stanford. That's right. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Um, I, I want to talk to you more about that after the show. Okay, <laughs> but, great. But I'm curious, so how did you get into photography? Because that's, that's another one of your focus areas. So, uh, you know, as, as, as we're talking, yet another coincidence. Um, uh -huh. when, when we, the, I referenced the, uh, 
the sailboat that business that we started in Maryland, mm -hmm. and part of that was building an 80-foot wooden boat. Um, oh. I didn't build it, but uh, we hired a boat builder in Albany, New York, to, to build oh. it. And part of our marketing for it was uh, um, presenting the, the process of building a wooden boat. It's a beautiful, she's a beautiful boat. She's up in Boston now. Uh, but the process is beautiful too, um, and mm -hmm. so we thought we would let our customers know, our potential customers know, you know, this thing is coming, and mm -hmm. um, and it's not just a storefront; it's a really beautiful wooden boat. Mm -hmm. And so we hired a friend of a friend who was a commercial photographer in New York to go up with me to the boatyard once every three weeks and photograph what was going on up there. And oh, I like watched the work in progress. Exactly, kind of oh, and wow. I watched him work, and I instantly became fascinated. My father had always had a camera, and I had always kind of had a camera, but I didn't know anything about how to use it or mm. th thinking visually. And I watched John um, uh, create these stories with his camera. Uh, and this is back in the day when it was filmed, so you mm. know it wasn't as easy to to see. And and we're, what really struck me is the first time we went up, and the the frame of the boat was was there, and it was really beautiful. It looked like dinosaur bones, and he lit it beautifully, and I thought, well, that's what we'll do. And we went up the second time, and I thought he would do that again, and because mm -hmm. now the skin was on it, and so it had it looked similar but different. You could see the progress. What he did instead was he photographed one of the shipwrights really close up, and this mm. man had a full beard and you know craggy face and <laughs> cut hands. He looked exactly like he should to mm -hmm. be working on a boat, and John's picture for that month was a portrait of this man doing really wow. close-up work with the, these beautiful wooden planks wow. and chisels and, and hammers. Very intricate and that's work. how he told the story. And I thought, that's so Amazing. cool. And yeah. so I, uh, within a week, I went and bought a camera and I started taking really horrible pictures. <laughs> well, and gotta start somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> and, then, and then I couldn't figure out why John's pictures uh, were so much better. He was a really top-notch commercial photographer and he had his clients were ABC TV and you know all those hmm. folks. And, and so I called him and I said, I got to come hang out with you and, and learn how to do this. And, okay. and he let me, and I uh, slowly but surely started to figure out so what each button and dial did. This was 23 years ago. Oh, this so you've been doing this 90s. for quite a while. Yeah. So you did this all concurrently with everything else that right. you've been doing. Yeah. Um, okay. But I just fell in love with, and, and being when I w ran the sailboat business, I was on the water 200 and something days a year. Mm -hmm. And I saw every you know, beautiful sunsets and beautiful sunrises and photos. other boats. And, and so it was a great place to learn photography with with you know visual things yeah. all the time and um, and so I just kept getting more and more into it and and then it became a vice and because I needed a better camera <laughs> and a better lens and um, and then I uh, as I started to think about it as a money-making thing as a business I was reading a book and somebody said mm -hmm. in, in one of the books I read photograph what you love because ah. you will it's just it will just come naturally Is to you. Is that so how you started with one, the animals? And that's how I started with the well, animals. Well, I think you brought some photos to show us. I did. Can we, can yep. we take a look yeah, at let's, those? Let's, those see what, uh, um, let's see what they look these like. These are some of the pets, right? Yeah. Um, and so I have a, I, I think I'm part dog. Um, I think <laughs> that, uh, that I have a, a connection with dogs that's, that's unexplainable. And so mm -hmm. we, uh, part of what we do, and we'll talk about the pet adoption project, but part of what I do is is pro bono work with local rescues to create portraits like this. These are all animals oh, that okay. were or are up for adoption um, and try and convey who they are and yeah. a little bit of their goofy selves oh, look at um, him. and oh. connect, hopefully people connect with them. Um, this guy's 13 weeks old and uh, oh, okay. I just photographed him on, on uh, Monday. Um, so these are available so for adoption? Most of them are available for adoption <coughs> right now. Well, I think one or two of them have been adopted. Um, okay. And they can contact you through your website, which we'll show at the end. Great. Yeah, if, if, if anybody yeah. tugged at their heart, uh, they, they, can, they can reach out. Yeah, I just want to show. So all of these, a lot of these pets are in the pet adoption um, project calendar that you did. Um, I'm going to show it to the camera. There we go. <laughs> for Bankwell. Yep. Um, so they can check that out. Um, if they just stop in a Bankwell office, they can That's right. Any of the Bankwell branches up. have them and just say, I want my calendar, and, yeah. and they'll be happy to send you home with one or a couple. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Mike. Oh, you're I know welcome. it went by so fast. It sure did. It always does. Yeah, that's a good like sign, We right? could talk all night. Yeah, 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 yeah. But maybe we'll do another episode sometime. Great. I'd know. love to. Yeah. And thank you to our audience for being here tonight. Um, I'm your host, Katie Augustine.
signing off. Take care and blessings. Good night. <laughs>